<laughs> I think if I uh, say anything whatsoever, like my life is over, they'll sue me for everything I got. Yeah, we keep hearing that. We yeah, keep yeah. hearing that, man. So it's you no know. joke. They scare the crap out of you, man. You, can't, you know, you can't say a word. But um, I can tell you what's happened thus far, and it's been uh, it's been an incredible ride. It's been an amazing experience, guys. By the way, last week I don't know if you watched last week's episode, but uh, we had a nice truck stop challenge. Yeah. Fed a bunch of big burger guys. Um, I made some barbecue sauce for you guys. Nice. Sorry, I bought a big batch. You can smear it on whatever you want: tacos, burritos. <laughs> now, is it chili hot, or is it just uh, you know good, good old-fashioned uh, hickory type barbecue? Here's the deal. See, I'm a spice freak. I love everything spicy. If I could, I could put some habaneros in there. But unfortunately, most of my tasters can't really handle that from the mouth and the other side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it hurts going in and coming down. It, it, you know what? We we we, we uh, you know we've uh, what's funny is Mike and I are fire eaters. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the last 20 years, we've always. Uh, Mike's been a part of the family, and my brothers and I, we try to outdo each other and see how hot we can get some of the stuff. Habaneros have been the latest one. Um, our new passion that we're getting ready for Thanksgiving is going to be the new ghost chili. Nice. Have you done any cooking with that? Uh, no. no. It's the one from India. They claim it's 20 times hotter than the habanero. Are you kidding me? No, that's what they're saying, I am man. nervous to try that. Oh, I no. love habanero for the flavor it has. Right, you know? right. you, you got to know how to use it. you got to know how much to put in something if you're using it for a sauce. I make a killer habanero salsa with fresh pineapples. Oh, uh, It's amazing. But, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I love spicy. My parents are from Israel, so I grew up on spicy stuff tastes and all different types of chilies and grilling a lot of stuff. I got a friend of mine, Jack, who he, he and I actually have the same situation. We always compete against uh, who can handle the spice the most. And I think as I'm getting older, I can't, my stomach just can't handle it as much. It tastes so good in my mouth, but man, <laughs> that next morning, I am just crying. I, I, I can't even use toilet paper and snap that. Wow, well, that's uh, something all your fans have been, <laughs> <laughs> been hoping to hear today. So, yeah, right? As you can see, we get into an in-depth uh, conversation. All right, we'll get back. Listen, to, I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> well, you know, we'll get back to so tell. Okay, so uh, we didn't see the show, and Arvin already uh, beat us for missing the show. Tell us about the. Uh, so it was a slap down. Is that what they called it, or slap down what? Well, no, the, the burger challenge that right. it was. But what that had? What did you say it was? A slap down or a burger? Truck stop challenge? No, I said when we we slapped him. <laughs> <laughs> truck stop. It was a truck stop. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The lunch truck. Yeah. The, the yeah. The uh, we we cooked a burger challenge for a right. bunch of uh, truckers across the country. Right. Nice. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. You know. I mean. It's my kind of food. I love it. I can go gourmet, but man, nothing beats a good burger. You know? Yeah. A good flavor. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're hungry, and you just want something good, throw some meat on the grill. I mean, really, so how are you enjoying the show, up. man? How's the pressure? And we heard from Jake last week what it's like to work with, uh, you know, Gordon. What's your take on it? It's fun, man. Um, listen, I grew up uh, from 18. I got an internship at a brokerage firm, right? I remember watching Boiler Room for the first time and thinking to myself, <laughs> God, I want to do that. I, I want to, you know, I'm 18. By the time I'm 21, I want to be driving around in a Lamborghini, right? Yeah, yeah. So I got into that business. Uh, you know, you guys know what happened with the economy two years ago. So. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's been an interesting ride nonetheless. So I've had my share of pressure, my share of challenges, and dealing with uh, ups and downs, etc. But uh, it's something else when you're dealing with food because something about food, when you cook it, you know, you're making food, you're in the kitchen and you're slaving and sweating, and you put something on the table, and when you have somebody uh, with the caliber, of, you know, the experience of Gordon Ramsay tasting it, it's nerve wracking. You know, it's, it's intimidating. Like, I'm making this food, I'm putting my heart on a plate, and you're literally just letting them taste it and say, do I like this or not, you know? And then he takes those pauses, and he looks at you, <laughs> and then he takes another bite, and then looks at you again, and shakes his hand a few times, you know? It's, uh, it's nerve-wracking, but it's incredible, you know? Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. Okay. No, I was going to say, so, I mean, but the intensity that you find in there, you know, we, we've heard different things about him, and then right. Jake brought us up to speed last week, but, I mean, do you find that it, it helps raise your game, being under that kind of pressure, that kind of scrutiny? Yeah, yeah, no, you know, it was great. People always ask me, who's your biggest competition on the show? You know, who's your rivalry, or what are you having a hard time uh, competing with? Yeah, and what are your challenges? I think, me personally, and this is just me, people may say uh, what they want, but for me, this whole experience was about challenging myself. I know I can cook. I know I can make amazing food. I grew up in L.A. I've had the privilege of tasting foods from across the country, across the world even. You know, we're very lucky and fortunate to live in L.A. Because you can go a mile here, a mile there, and you've got all these amazing restaurants you, you can tap into and taste, right? Uh, my biggest challenge was really challenging myself, pushing myself to the next level. Wow. You know, getting myself to the game I want to be at. And it was fun. Giving yourself a time limit. Having a, a, a pantry, I mean, that was the best. You drool over it. You walk in and it's it's 
like Whole Foods on steroids, and you don't have to pay for anything. Nice. You know what I mean? Nice. Uh, it, it's lots of fun. It's lots of fun. I miss it. I actually really, really miss it. I try to have my wife do some situations and build some scenarios. <laughs> I'm like, honey, go to Whole Foods and go buy a couple different things. Don't tell me what they are. Come back, put them in a bag, and just tell me I got an hour to me. Nice. <laughs> Nice. nice. I was going to say, that sounds like dinner at Mike's house every day. <laughs> the toughest part is just opening up all their cans. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, man. I've been there. I've been there. I'm going broke going shopping all the time. These hey, but do, you, do you guys have like a little, uh, where there's, um, you know, as friends, you, you become friends with some of the contestants. Do you guys uh, play jokes on each other? Do you guys, is there some chemistry there? Or is it all just focus on beating each other? No, there's a, it, it's really tough, man. You know, it's, there's a lot of love. When you deal with food and cooking, and, and, and we've had a lot of team challenges. You know, we gotta cook. We gotta cook for Marines. How many people can say that before they get shipped off to Iraq and getting the privilege and opportunity to give them their last, you know, good American meal before they get shipped off? Um, it's lots of fun, and those team challenges are lots and lots of fun. But then you get kind of brought back to uh, reality and say, I'm, I'm in a competition. Here, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a quarter million dollars at stake. I'm here to compete. And basically, you got to see everybody go home, except for yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's 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 funny because you've got both sides of it. You've got the love, you've got the teamwork, and then you've got that individuality where you need to compete for yourself. Where are we at right now? How many uh, how many spots are left? You're in the top top nine right now. Wow, okay. top nine. Yeah, this this uh, tonight should be pretty fun. I think it's a wedding challenge, so it should be. Should be really cool. Is it funny how he says, "I think it's a wedding." <laughs> like, like he doesn't know. You know what though? You got to give him credit, man. He's, he's honoring the contract. It's, I guess the whole, you know, you got to keep. It's funny because how they say uh, all these reality shows or all these different ones. I never realized up until about a year ago how soon they're done, and then you kind of have to sit there and hold all of this in. Everything from uh, my wife watches all of the Bachelor ones and yeah. all the others where these people can't even date in real life, but. I mean, it's got to be hard for you guys because just a lot of the chefs, they have certain egos and personalities. Oh, You're man. Dying to it's been them. terrible. I can't even tell my wife, and she's like been seducing me with <laughs> sex all the time. I got to shut my mouth. Oh, well, you know, that's a rough <laughs> life, man. I mean, oh, man, who are you? <laughs> I know. Well, I, you know, I can't give her the scoop, so she's not hooking me up. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> you know what? If she's listening, she's like, uh huh, yeah, yeah, I'll show him the night when he gets home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So, okay, so let's assume, you know, you're still in the mix. What, what, what's, what's the next step after the show? Uh, listen, you know, it, just keeping my options open, keeping my uh, energy positive, keeping my heart open to these things. Uh, it, it, I'll tell you one thing, fellas. It, it's pretty amazing because, you know, you you grow up here. It, it's a hustle type environment. L.A., it's so competitive, especially in entertainment. And me being born and raised here, you know, it's the last thing I wanted to deal with. It's like, man, everyone comes to L.A. to try to be an actor and be somebody fancy. I'm, I'm all good. I got my close-knit friends. My best friends are still my friends from elementary school and high school. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, then you come out and you realize that you're working and, and, and you're trying to make a living and make money, but you're kind of, something's missing. You're not, your passion's not being fulfilled. You're not doing what you love doing. And I have no idea how I got into food. I grew up in a pretty ghetto, na ghetto neighborhood in Sun Valley. You know, eating corn on the cob off this, you know. This <laughs> but that was some good corn on the cob. Oh, it was amazing, man, right. with the mayonnaise We're and the tapatio on top. Man, oh, really? I lived off uh, Sadako in Lancashire. I used to live on Vi uh, Vineland and Oxnard. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so you guys ate really on the, 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 the same Ralph's shopping cart. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I think we ate the same parts, man. There's some bomb refried beans in this <laughs> local man. I'll tell you. Bomb is. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, bomb. The That's how you feel after. On both sides. Yeah. But you had to be able to just realize and have this uh, experience really confirm and bring me to a place where I realize, wow, I love cooking, I love food, I love being able to feed people and, and express myself artistically that way. Uh, it, it, it's incredible that. It just snapped and I said, yo, I gotta, I gotta pursue this. I gotta do something in this direction because it really, really does make me happy. And if I look at anybody who's successful at what they do, they do what they love. Right, and it's one of those things. I mean, obviously, we don't know who's going to win, although you know, we, we have a good idea. You know, <laughs> well, I was going to say, didn't we have the same idea yeah. last week, too, and put yeah. Jake on the spot? Yeah. But it's got to be one of those things that, in the back of your mind, it's got to be something that tells you, you know what, I'm here to win. I know I'm good. But if I don't win, because of this exposure, I mean, you, you still, you're a winner. I mean, you're going to get to places where maybe you weren't able to had you not been on the show. Don't you think that? Absolutely, absolutely. I never expected much from this. Uh, I, I had no idea how it, how it even started. I had a friend of mine 
who was her producer, and she straight up said, yeah, there's a show, Master Chef, it's coming to L.A., you should check it out, it's with Gordon Ramsay, I'm like, Gordon Ramsay, I don't want to get yelled at all day, you know, <laughs> I like, I got something better to do, <laughs> I don't want to get yelled at and creamed and embarrassed nationally on television, right, uh, but it's a different twist, and Gordon's been nothing but a mentor, he's been nothing but uh, an incredible uh teacher, along with uh, Joe Bastianich and uh, Graham Elliott. It's, it's been incredible. We had the, the opportunity to do a lot of these uh, off-camera Master Chef classes, which was, uh, you know, consider culinary school on steroids, you know. You go to culinary school, you drop 60 grand to go, and you got, you're in a class with uh, 100 other people. Right. Here we had these private rooms with Graham Elliott, who's the youngest four-star chef out there in the country, and he's doing incredible things, and he's sitting there one-on-one -on -one with you, coaching you, giving you some ideas, uh, teaching you how to do stuff. I mean, I was breaking down chickens, whole chickens in 30 seconds flat. It's fun. <laughs> I feel like a psychotic butcher, just that, the, the, the wing, the, 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 the breast, the thigh, all broken. It's fun. It, it's just an incredible experience. Outstanding. Are you going to be able to stick around with us? Let's yeah. Let's us up for our first break. You're listening to the uh, Three Guys Rant at AdviceRadio.com. And we'll be right back. See you.